In the next couple of units, we're going to be looking at bipolar junction transistors, or as we'll often abbreviate BJTs. So in this unit, we're going to start out here with a basic overview. We're going to take a couple videos to look at the semiconductor physics and what's sort of going on at an atomic and subatomic level for these devices. We'll then approximate and get a circuit model. We'll do some DC analysis. And then in the next unit, we'll come back and we'll look at how we can use these devices with AC signals to amplify. So in this video, let's get back to sort of our basic overview. So our bipolar junction transistors consist of three separately doped regions containing two PN junctions. So we have two varieties, and you can kind of see I've got two partially filled in sketches here below. The first variety is an NPN transistor. And so we can see that this name comes from the fact that we have this P-type region, which is sandwiched between two N-type regions. The other type is a PMP transistor. And so of course here we have our N-type region, which is sandwiched between our two P-type regions. Now we're sort of drawing this a little idealistically. Of course, we don't actually have blocks of N-type region that we're sandwiching a P-type region with. Uh, if we want a, a little bit more realistic look, let's say we have a silicon wafer and we've doped this wafer or rather we've created this wafer such that it's an n-type wafer when we were doing our crystal growth so what we would do then is we would create a p-type well so sort of a large p-type dope region and then within that p-type well we could add another n-type region like this and so of course from there we could have contacts to the three different regions so a contact there, a contact there, and a contact there. And so that sort of highlights a point I wanna make here is that we're dealing now with a three terminal device. So in our previous discussions, we've talked about diodes. And of course, in previous courses, we've introduced resistors, capacitors, uh, inductors, but all of these devices have been two terminal devices. So now we're looking at this new three terminal device. So let's come back up here to our diagrams and name what these terminals are. So they, they actually have the same names regardless of which of these two we're looking at. So both of these are going to have an emitter, a collector, and a base. And so we're gonna get a little bit better idea of why these terminals are named this as we look at the semiconductor physics that sort of underlie the transistor operation. So emitter, collector, and base for our PMP type as well. So a couple other things to note sort of in terms of the realistic structure of our transistor is that this base region, the region sandwiched in between the two others, is very small. So base region is very small. Um, so how small do I mean when I say very small? Well, let's just say it's on the order of tens to hundreds of nanometers. So of course, nanometers, 10 to the minus ninth meters. And so lattice distances for our silicon crystal is on the order of a 10th of a nanometer. Uh, so we're talking extremely small distances for our base width. Uh, and we'll come back to why that's important as we are talking about the semiconductor physics and the device operation. So ultimately what this means though, this base region being very small is we can't really approximate it as just two back-to-back -back diodes. So cannot approximate as two back-to-back -back diodes. Because if we take a look at these diagrams at first, we can say, all right, well here we've got a PN junction, so that's like a PN diode. Here's another PN junction, so that's another PN diode. Uh, so we could treat that maybe as two back-to-back -back diodes, and what we're saying here is that base is so small that we basically have some interaction between those two junctions, which we're gonna talk about in the next video. But we do still have these two PN junctions, so that means overall we're going to have four possible operating conditions. And so this is per device. So two PN junctions means that we have four operating conditions because with each of our PN junctions, remember it can be either forward biased or reverse biased. So I'm gonna show a, sort of a quick plot and we're gonna come back and talk about this later and reference it a lot later. In order to do so, let's look at our 
NPN transistor over here, and I'm gonna define some voltages. So in general with our NPN, we're going to be using our, our base emitter voltage a lot. And so our base emitter voltage is going to be defined as positive at the base, negative at the emitter, so V, V, E. And we'll also be dealing with our base collector voltage, V, V, C. Again, positive at the base, negative at the collector. So with those two voltages in mind, I can define my four different operating conditions. So on one axis, I'm gonna plot my VBC, and on the other axis, I'm gonna plot my VBE. And, and so I should say I'm not really doing a plot, rather I'm just gonna describe what's going on in each of these four regions. So one region that we're gonna look at in, in the next video or the video after is our forward active mode. And so that's going to happen when we have the BE junction forward biased. So this is forward active. So our BE junction is positive. So we're in sort of this, this right half plane here. And our BC junction is reverse biased. So we're in this negative part for our BC junction. Another combination that we're gonna deal with a little bit later on is saturation. And so saturation is when both of the junctions are forward biased. As you might imagine, if both of our junctions are reverse biased, the device is essentially off, so we're gonna call this mode cut off. And then this fourth mode is sort of the inverse of our forward active mode, so we're gonna call this our inverse active mode. And so, again, all we've done there is we've just switched, now our VBC is forward biased and our VBE is reverse biased. And so at first glance, you might say, okay, well, uh, we've just sort of switched, we have one junction forward bias, one junction reverse bias, one junction forward bias, one junction reverse bias, so the operation should be pretty much the same, but our devices aren't symmetrical, so ultimately what that means is our inverse and forward active are going to behave differently. So device is not symmetrical, And so what that means is that it's going to matter which terminal we are treating as the emitter and which terminal we're treating as the collector. So matters which terminal is emitter and which is collector. So of course there's going to be some geometry differences but even more important than that is we're going to have different doping levels in the different regions. So different doping levels or different doping concentrations between our emitter and collector. And so the one last thing I wanna sort of overview and sort of, I guess, preview is what we're going to see later on when we look at the basic operation of our transistor is that the voltage between two terminals is going to control the current between or the current through the third, I should say. So the voltage between two terminals controls current through the third. And so this is what we call our basic transistor action. So we're gonna look at another type of transistor a little bit later on in, in our, our course, our MOSFET. And so we're gonna see it has the same basic transistor action, but it accomplishes it through a little bit different, uh, a little bit different physics. So that's all for our basic overview. In the next couple of videos, as I said, we're gonna look a little bit closer at the semiconductor physics and how our device is actually operating.